South Florida's news leader. This is NBC6 News. First of five, he came to town to help South Florida recover from a hurricane. Now he's accused of rape. Police say the suspect, a roofer from Chicago, robbed and raped the South Florida woman at her job. And now we learn that roofer has an extensive criminal record. Martha Sigowski is live in Pompano Beach with our top story at five. Martha? Well, in the past, he's been charged with robbery, aggravated robbery, battery, assault, intimidation, and pimping. Well, now a slew of charges are coming against Raven Haynes, which could put him behind bars for good. He is a criminal with an arrest record from Chicago that is long. Raven Adams Haynes here in South Florida working as a roofer, picking up jobs in the wake of Hurricane Wilma, and according to BSO, committing a horrible crime against a woman on January 21st. This past Saturday, around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he decided to go into a nearby store, not too far from his motel, where he basically uh, raped and and rob this this poor woman. Detectives say it was at this store on North Federal Highway close by where Haynes and some other roofers had been staying in this motel when the 29 year old Haynes walked in and asked the woman working there to show him a few items. And when the 33 year old turned her back, that's what BSO says he attacked. Uh, he came up, got her in a stranglehold, dragged her into the back of the store, found a knife back there that was used for opening boxes, held it to her throat, made her open up the cash register, uh, then forced her to lock the door of the store, dragged her back into the rear of the store and spent about half an hour brutalizing her. But she acted quickly after that attack, calling police and giving detectives a very good description. BSO deputies say they saw Haynes leaving the motel. He had showered and changed his clothes and was about to get into a taxi when he was arrested. Uh, we managed to get a search warrant, went into his motel room. We found the clothing that he was wearing when he raped this woman and we found her underwear in the pocket of his pants. Haynes is being held without bond. He faces a multitude of charges. If convicted, he will spend the rest of his life in prison. Reporting live from Pompano Beach, Martha Sigowski, NBC6. A risky rescue today as firefighters had to go way up to save a worker injured in a construction accident. It happened this afternoon along Collins Avenue in Sunny Isles Beach. The worker was on the 48th floor when he fell about 20 feet. He had a safety line, but firefighters say it apparently didn't work. Because of the height involved, firefighters had to turn a dumpster into a rescue basket to bring that man down. It was a pretty dangerous operation, so all precautions were taken to ensure that the patient was removed safely and also the safety of our personnel on the scene. The 23-year-old victim was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital. No word on his condition. Windy conditions across South Florida, making more for just a bad hair, hair day. It's actually making it dangerous here in South Florida. Rip current warnings across South Florida beaches. Amra Sohn is live on Fort Lauderdale Beach with more on that, Amra. Well, it is definitely a gorgeous day to hit the beaches, but not exactly the safest. You can bet around Broward and Miami-Dade beaches, you will see red and orange flags flying, and that's because rip currents are a high hazard today. Don't let the sunny, clear skies and the gentle breeze fool you. It's not a great day to go swimming. If you're a strong swimmer, you can go in and you can ride some waves. If, you're, if you don't know what you're doing, it's not good to go in. The red and purple flags are flying at Fort Lauderdale Beach. Today is a relatively high hazard with strong rip currents, so we'll fly the red flag. The purple flag deals with the man of war jellyfish. The red flag is the highest hazard warning for rip currents, which are powerful currents of water that flow away from the shoreline. And that's a big threat with the easterly winds. Whenever there's an east wind, we're going to have rip currents. There's no question okay, about it. The water is taking the path of least resistance. It's cutting a hole in the sandbar and it's channeling out. So it's literally ripping out. It's going out to sea. If you do want to just get wet, Talk to the lifeguard, go in right in front of the lifeguard. If by chance you step off and you get caught in a rip current, you want to wave for help. Hopefully you're swimming right in front of a lifeguard. We can come in and get you. If you're not near a, a lifeguard, swim parallel to shore. A push from the east brings in the man of wars to the shore, and you don't want to get stung by one of these. The man of war are a menace. I mean, they will sting you. It's like a bee. So if you don't want to get stung by one of those jellyfishes or if you don't want to be ripped away by a strong current, officials are asking that you don't swim in the beaches at all today. And also make sure you check back with NBC6 for weather updates. We're live in Fort Lauderdale, Amra Sohn, NBC6. Amra, thank you. And the winds causing those rip currents are about to shift. And that's going to bring another change to our weather here at home. Our new meteorologist, chief meteorologist, Paul Diano, joins us now with the first forecast. Hi, Paul. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you at home. The winds are going to be shifting first. They will 
will be shifting to the south, which is going to keep us warm for one more day. Then we get a cold front and much cooler temperatures heading out over the next 48 hours or so. Over my shoulder, we've got an interesting stat for you. 73 degrees this morning. That was a warm start. And for the entire month of January, that is the warmest start that we have had all month long at 73 degrees. We are still in the 70s out there right now. And here is the change. It is a cold front that stretches all the way from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to New York City right now. A lot of rain, a lot of snow for some parts of the Northeast. For us, just a lot of warm outside right now. 81 degrees in Jacksonville, 78 degrees in Miami. But check out St. Louis, 34. It's not going to get that cold around here, but some much cooler air will be moving in as soon as tomorrow night. Details on that and the Weather Plus six-day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Julie? A Miami-Dade transit bus filled with passengers tangles with a dump truck. Tonight, that bus driver is recovering in the hospital. It happened early this morning along Southwest 97th Avenue and Sterling Drive. The bus driver, Kim Bynum, was on her normal route heading north on Southwest 9th Avenue, the truck going south. Police say the truck driver, Jimmy Finkler, made a left-hand turn across traffic right into the path of the bus. Driver Bynum tried to avoid a collision but could not. The driver for the Metro Dade bus uh, received my, uh, sustained minor injuries to the leg uh, but was airlifted to Jackson Trauma. Her Again, Bynum suffered two broken legs. She is listed in stable but good condition. 22 passengers on board were treated for minor injuries. The truck driver suffered a minor head injury and also taken to the hospital. Police have since ticketed him for this accident. A Florida Highway Patrol trooper injured in a roadside accident in Broward remains in serious condition tonight. 20-year-old Daryl Haywood had pulled over a Hyundai early Sunday morning on the turnpike when a pickup truck rear-ended his patrol car, causing it to rear-end the Hyundai. That left the trooper trapped in his vehicle for a half hour. Investigators say charges are now pending against the driver of the pickup truck. Several people are arrested following a nightclub shooting in Pembroke Pines. It happened early this morning at the Marabou Cafe on Pines Boulevard in Palm Avenue. According to investigators, shots were fired during a confrontation outside the club. One person was shot. We spoke to him by phone. Well, what, where were you shot, though? Well, in my side. Just one time? I don't know, too. Yeah, just one time. Police followed and arrested three people a few miles from that shooting scene. So far, no word of any charges. It's being called Black Monday in the automotive industry. Ford Motor Company announcing major job cuts after a year that saw the nation's oldest car company replaced by General Motors as the top-selling car manufacturer in the U.S. Jay Gray has the latest from Dearborn, Michigan. Today, we declare the resurgence of the Ford Motor Company. His great-grandfather created the nation's first car company, and now Bill Ford Jr. is fighting to keep the automaker on the road. These cuts are a painful last resort, and I'm deeply mindful of their impact. As many as 30,000 Ford employees will lose their jobs, part of a massive restructuring effort that includes closing or idling 14 plants by 2012. Four U.S. plants have been targeted, St. Louis, Atlanta, Wixom, Michigan, and Batavia, Ohio. Others could follow. They built us on our backs, and they should be protecting our backs at the same time. Once the engine that drove U.S. auto manufacturing, Ford was outsold for the first time last year by General Motors. Is this is a very crowded marketplace, and the ability to differentiate your company from anybody else's uh, is getting tougher and tougher as years go by. Each year for the last decade, Ford has lost a share of the U.S. market and has lost money in North America during four of the last five business quarters. In short, we will not stand for business as usual. Ford, as part of the way forward plan, Ford will get out of the minivan market and steer away from small trucks and larger SUVs, focusing instead on more fuel efficient vehicles. The world's largest automaker doing everything it can not to run out of gas in an increasingly competitive industry. Jay Gray, NBC News, Dearborn, Michigan. And this site coming in off the satellites this afternoon. Take a look. An 18-ton highway sign lies across the interstate highway in San Diego, tying up traffic for miles. One person was hurt when that sign came down. Now, a garbage truck with its hydraulic boom lifted, holding up a recycling bin, hit that sign, knocking it off its supports. The sign had been 20 feet above the pavement when it came crashing down. A man in his late 20s driving under the sign was hurt in his car when he was hit. And a five-story building collapsed in central Nairobi, Kenya today, while more than 280 workers were inside. At least 10 people are dead. 
According to medics, more than 60 seriously injured people were also rushed to the hospital. Rescuers clawed at the rubble with their bare hands trying to get to people. An inspector had reportedly warned last week that that structure was not safe, and those workers were adding additional stories to that building when it collapsed around them. With 14 mining deaths this month alone, including two this past weekend, lawmakers in West Virginia are moving quickly to pass legislation aimed at keeping trapped miners alive. This as the pressure mounts on the federal government to clamp down on the coal mining industry. Doug Luzader has more from Washington. With another community in West Virginia grieving after an accident, with two more miners dead, 14 in three weeks, a Senate subcommittee on mining issues got an earful about mine safety. We have known for years that we need additional mine rescue teams in this country, and the problem isn't getting, getting better, it's getting worse. Industry critics say that even as the nation now relies on coal to generate half of its electricity, the government oversight has fallen in recent years. The administration's budgets have translated into four-year cuts in mine health and safety enforcement resources and personnel. The federal regulators say the Sago mine, where 12 miners died earlier this month, had been cited for numerous violations. But many had been resolved, and so far none are believed to have caused the explosion that trapped miners. I believe that if there is any good that can come of this horrible event, it will be in inspiring greater innovations in mine safety. This is a mine safety expert showed senators it new devices that can help communicate with miners and system. locate them deep underground. It is well. Back in West Virginia, after a weekend vigil for the two most recent victims, there is an effort underway to quickly tighten state regulations. I've promised to each one of these families their loved one will have not died in vain. We are going to make these changes that will sweep across America hopefully, and sweep across coal communities in West Virginia that are still mourning. In Washington, Doug Luzader, NBC News. In Iraq today, two civilians and a police officer died in a suicide bombing in Baghdad. Police say the bomb exploded near a checkpoint into the green zone where the Iraqi government and the U.S. Embassy are located. Officials say the suicide bomber detonated a vehicle filled with explosives as a police patrol passed by the Iranian embassy. Six other bystanders were wounded in that blast. And still no word on the fate of journalist Jill Carroll, three days after a deadline for meeting terrorist demands passed. Her family has issued yet another appeal for her release. Her father speaking again on Arab TV, translated into Arabic. Alive, my daughter will not be silenced. Your story is one that can be told by Jill to the whole world. Allowing her to live and releasing her will enable her to do that. Carol was abducted on the streets of Baghdad 10 days ago. Now her captors are demanding eight Islamic women prisoners be released before they will release her. President Bush and the former head of the National Security Agency today kicked off a fresh administration effort to defend the eavesdropping that they say is essential to the fight against terrorism, but that critics call illegal domestic spying. Steve Handelsman has the latest. To a cheering crowd at Kansas State, President Bush vowed not to stop eavesdropping on al-Qaeda suspects. If they're making phone calls into the United States, we need to know why to protect you. The calls and emails are intercepted by the National Security Agency. Former NSA Director Mike Hayden, now the nation's number two in intelligence, today joined the Bush PR offensive. This is targeted. This is focused. This is about al-Qaeda. Shocked by 9-11, Hayden says he ordered eavesdropping on calls into the U.S., says the president authorized it later, and says NSA is not fishing with a wide net. When you're talking to your daughter at State College, this program cannot intercept your conversations. Hayden says modern communication leaves no time for the warrants and paperwork that some say are required. This is hot pursuit of communications entering or leaving America involving someone we believe is associated with al-Qaeda. Congress is demanding more information. The president has violated the law, period. But the fact uh, is that there's not been an attack on the United States of America in four years. I think you've got to give the administration credit for that. President Bush is counting on that to make his case for a once secret domestic spying program that he's now publicly defending. That defense will be front and center this week. President Bush even pays a visit to the NSA near Baltimore on Wednesday. 
two weeks before Senate hearings on domestic spying. At the White House, I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC6. Well, it's now our turn to give our official welcome to Paul Deano, who joins us now as Chief Meteorologist here at NBC6. So nice to have you aboard, and man, you have beautiful weather to start off with. Isn't it so nice to start off a career with this? A lot of (laughs) sunshine. I know this is January in South Florida. You are used to it. Some of us who are just moving here are not used to it, but our La Concha Cam in Key West, yeah, there it is. Lots of sunshine, temperatures in the upper 70s, just about picture perfect all throughout South Florida as we speak. Your almanac for today, things looking pretty good. Weather plus Doppler live showing no rainfall anywhere. Davie, Pembroke Pines, Carroll City, Miami Lakes, Hialeah, all coming up dry right now. Your high today was 80 degrees. That's a couple degrees above normal. Morning low way above normal. 73 as opposed to where we should be this time of year, 59. That's 73, the warmest overnight low we have had all month long. 75 now in Fort Lauderdale, 77 at Miami International Airport. Other temperatures around South Florida, 76 for Opelika, 75 in Homestead. Pair of sevens in Marathon, 77 there in Key West, where we saw that beautiful sunshine, 76 degrees. Where it is not sunny and where it's not very warm right now, we had ourselves a snowstorm. Portland, Maine, Syracuse, New York. Some freezing rain for Hartford, Connecticut. Maybe I have some family up there. Well, they had a rough go of it today. We are going to be influenced by the same weather maker, but on the southern edge of things, which is the less intense, the less wintry edge of things. There's a couple clouds right now over Georgia and the panhandle of Florida, but that will be moving in our direction, and that is coming along with a cold front. Between now and then, between now and tomorrow night, it will be warm. The winds go from easterly, which caused those rip currents, to a more southerly flow of air. So tomorrow, even warmer than today, I'm going for a high of 80 three degrees but we do have that cold front that's going to move in tomorrow night into wednesday morning and what that'll do we'll go from the lower 80s down to the mid to lower 70s so some cooler weather by Wednesday, and the cooler weather will stick around for several days once this cold front passes by while you're sleeping Tuesday night into Wednesday. Your forecast for tonight, you might want to turn the air conditioning on while you're sleeping. This evening, 75 degrees down to 71 overnight tonight. And tomorrow, one final warm day before that front arrives. A lot of sunshine, 83 degrees. Tomorrow evening, 76 degrees. One to two foot seas for tomorrow, a light shot for the bay and a surf temperature of 73. Your weather plus six-day forecast. Here comes that front and cooler temperatures on Wednesday with a high of 77, 74 on Thursday, back to normal for Saturday and Sunday. Let's check traffic with Erica Rodriguez. Well, Paul, we do have a huge problem. This is I-595 eastbound at the ramp to I-95 northbound. What you look at is that broken down dump truck. The problem was is that it just stopped in the middle of that ramp and now what they had to do is take off all the dirt that it was hauling on another truck and they have completely shut down this ramp at this time. This is 595 eastbound ramp to I-95 northbound. It is backing traffic on 595 itself to 441. If you do need to try to get north on I-95, I suggest taking 595, getting off at 441. Head north on 441 and then you can hop on I-95 from that as well. And if you are taking a look at the Dolphin Expressway, This is kind of, the sun's starting to come down, so it is a little bit of a foggy scene here. But we do have a problem. This is on the Palmetto northbound after Bird Road, where a construction light reportedly fell onto a car. It is causing slowdowns in the area. But southbound is not being impeded that much at this time. Traffic is still flowing quite well in this area. Taking a look at I-95. If you're coming out of downtown Miami, it is still bumper to bumper from downtown Miami all the way up to the Golden Glades. But luckily, no accidents reported at this time. I'm Erica Rodriguez with your NBC6 traffic. Well, the parents of the infant penguin whose disappearance last month was followed around the world have laid a new egg. Three-month-old Toga disappeared in December from Amazon World on the Isle of Wight in southern England. Well, despite scores of reported sightings and an on-air confession from the man who says he stole the bird, Toga has not been found. A penguin chick is expected, though, to emerge in late February. <laughs> After serving 24 years for a crime he didn't commit, a Florida man steps out into freedom and going underground. After three weeks of outages after Wilma, the push to get power companies to bury power lines and the push back. South Florida's mom and pop hotels, the last ditch effort some are taking in order to stop from checking out for good. And it's a study that will have you saying, soy what? The study that's refuting the cholesterol cutting benefits of the soybean. Plus, a risky rescue in the Rockies as seven hikers get stranded on the side of a snowy slope. That and more when the NBC6 News at 5 continues. You're watching NBC6 News with Jackie Nespro and Julia Yarbo. NBC6, South Florida's news leader. 
Many South Floridians are owed money, and we want them to get it back. Millions of dollars. Thousands of people. One of them could be you. $49,000. Payback starts next Thursday at 11 on NBC6. Trouble in the great outdoors over the weekend when a group of hikers found themselves in deep. The seven hikers got stranded in the mountains of Utah. They're alive today thanks to a dramatic search and rescue operation. One caught on camera. Tony Segreto is here live with the story, Tony. Oh, Jackie and Julia, good weather, the right gear, and a beautiful climb up 9,000 feet to the summit of Mount Olympus. But on the way back down, a group of hikers left the main trail and hit trouble, prompting a rescue rescue in the Rockies. A breathtaking and near-perfect rescue in the Rockies. Life flight helicopters saved the day for members of the Korean Alpine Mountaineering Club in Salt Lake City, who seemed to have everything going for them over the weekend. But that's when their luck ran out. As they came down one by one, it was so steep that they lost their footing. Falling rescuers say more than 60 feet. Four women and three men who range in age from 40 to 60 were stranded overnight in the bitter cold with a couple of them injured. The group carved out a ledge and huddled together for warmth, and one of them used a cell phone to call for help. By then, it was too late in the day to try a helicopter rescue. So, search teams from the Salt Lake County Sheriff's Department headed up the mountain, bringing more cold weather gear. The weather's been down in the very low single digits. Uh, it's extremely cold. Uh, we're worried about uh, cold exposures. The Korean group climbs regularly in Utah's Wasatch Mountains. Rescuers praise them for keeping calm under extreme conditions. Three of the climbers were able to walk down, escorted by search and rescue workers. So without the rescue teams, uh, excellent job. Maybe we really have a really big problem. But the remaining four had to wait for helicopter teams to airlift them out. If we would not have had the ability of the helicopter, we still would have been up there for the next all day today, perhaps. Well, fortunately, their injuries were not life-threatening, though one woman reportedly broke her back and other climbers suffered various broken bones. When asked why he and his group left the main trail, Han, as you saw in that piece, answered back, we're mountaineers. It's challenging. Thankfully for them on this challenge, they did have expert backup. Jackie. Thank you, Tony. Searching for answers, a wife on a mission to find her husband and clear her name. All new at 6 o'clock, her husband disappeared at sea. Now one of the nation's best-known forensic scientists looks for clues on the cruise ship. Ahead in this hour, an uncertain future for the healthcare industry is making for some scared seniors. Up next, a state's plan and a warning to go with it. We'll explain. Behind bars for 24 hours, new evidence now. Can three letters, DNA, mean freedom for one man? And protecting your power, could the widespread outages like we saw after Wilma be avoided? We'll tell you what we found out when the NBC6 News at 5 continues. NBC Tonight, the one night where anything can happen, and it usually does. Starting with the hottest destination, an all-new Las Vegas, <laughs> where you can do anything, but they'll be watching. This one again. <laughs> then, it's the show critics call insanely good. He's trying to tell me something. And the award winner, Patricia Arquette, in an all-new medium. <laughs> it's all new tonight on NBC. Closed captioning on NBC6, brought to you by City Furniture, now offering same-day delivery seven days a week. A well-known Miami lawyer takes the stand to deny he sold out thousands of clients in reaching a settlement in the lawsuit over the city's fire fee. Years ago, Hank Adorno's firm filed a class action suit claiming the fee imposed on Miami property owners was unconstitutional. After the city had collected millions in fire fees, Adorno settled the case for $7 million. But rather than getting refunds for all property owners who paid illegal fees, settlement money went to a handful of folks who'd fought the fire fee, including a $2 million payment to Adorno's firm. But Adorno denies he intended to sell out other class action plaintiffs who paid the fire fee. So here was something dropped on our laps to get one set of our clients money, yes, sir. net five million to them, okay? While at the same time being able to come right back at a later date after November, or actually I thought it would have been sometime in October, and gotten our class 24 
to 75 because nothing would have changed. But Adorno had to admit his firm did little to pursue that broader refund claim in the months following the settlement. And because his clients agreed not to discuss the settlement for six months until it was approved by city commissioners, Adorno's lawyers may have let the broader claim lapse, meaning other property owners missed out on refunds. Judge Peter Lopez will decide whether the whole fire fee settlement should be tossed out. A Florida man who served 24 years in prison for a crime DNA evidence proved he did not commit is finally free. Alan Crotzer walked out of a Tampa courthouse today after a judge declared him a free man. He had been behind bars since 1981 for rape and robbery, crimes he was sentenced to 130 years for. The prosecutors say DNA tests at the crime scene prove Crotzer did not do it. I haven't been outside of prison in 25 years. Lovely. Crotzer said the first thing he was going to do was attend a barbecue with his family, then take a bath, in a real bathtub. Well, how to avoid a power wipeout like the one Hurricane Wilma caused? That's what state regulators are now looking into. The Public Service Commission is supposed to recommend fixes next month. Nick Bogert is live outside the Miami studios with details on that, Nick. Well, virtually everyone in South Florida lost power after Wilma, and Katrina rendered a lot of us powerless as well. Well, some local officials were in Tallahassee today urging pressure on the power company to toughen up its system. We need a commitment from the utilities to come in and put the money where their mouth is. Let's Daniel Beach Mayor Ann Castro tells public service commissioners something's not right when a category two like Wilma can put so many out of power. She says FPNL ought to be forced to react more like the private company she works for. We don't get to go to a state government agency or anybody else and say, gee, we didn't do a good job this year. We need you to raise our prices for us so that we can, you know, dig ourselves out of this hole. You can't Mayor Castro that. echoing and the complaint of many local officials in South Florida that utility polls aren't being checked systematically. She says some polls on her street are older than she is. FPL says that's not the issue. Age of the poll doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad poll. Uh, polls can stand 45, 50 years. Some figure the answer is to put more of the transmission system underground where it can't be blown or knocked down. FPL says that would cost an average of $13,000 per home, but some critics think the true cost of power outages hasn't been taken into account. It's the cost of lost food. It's the cost of lost medicine. It's the, the value that people place on their lost comfort. It's lost wages. The Public Service Commission, accused in the past of going too easy on utilities, is supposed to pull together its report by late next month, just before lawmakers will convene in the Capitol. Well, there are five members on the Public Service Commission, and three of them are newly appointed. So a lot of folks figure that this report on storm-related reform is going to be a test as to how aggressive the state regulators are going to be with the power companies. We're live outside the Miami studios. Nick Bogart, NBC6. Hard to believe that we're still talking about those storms, but of course it's so nice now, I don't even want to think about it. No, we really are, we actually live <laughs> in the best place in the country, isn't that right, Dr. This is the uh, This is the hot spot, so to speak, because at temperatures tomorrow, we're going to be up to about 83 degrees. Remember, since we were talking about Wilma just a moment ago, how cold it got and how clear and crisp it got after Wilma went through. Nothing like that. Uh, in the uh, days ahead, although it will cool off. As Paul mentioned earlier, uh, there's a cold front coming in tomorrow night. By Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it'll be windy and cooler, but not cold like the past several cold fronts. So this one's going to be a nice refreshing change, nice refreshing, cool northwesterly flow building in. But in the meantime, until the front gets here, our forecast first calling for 72 in the morning, 83 tomorrow afternoon, a very, very light southwesterly wind, and then 76 as we head toward tomorrow evening. Our uh, time-lapse uh, imagery from the American Airlines Arena Cam earlier today, just after daybreak, overlooking the port of Miami, indicating some clouds coming in, but they are coming in from the southeast, not the east, so the rip currents have gone away. No problem with that. A much better afternoon as far as the uh, boating conditions have been concerned. Now, that southeasterly breeze will really boost our temperatures to well above normals by uh, tomorrow. 75 right now in Fort Lauderdale, 77 in Miami. Across the rest of the region, we've got uh, 76 out around the Miccosukee, 77 Marathon. Key West, you're 76 right now. It's also 76 degrees in the Pines. Homestead, 75. You can see on the visible satellite the clouds moving from southeast to northwest, so definitely a change in the pattern now. Instead of the easterly winds, a southeasterly flow. So we're going to tack on a couple of more degrees in our high temperature tomorrow over what we saw today. And today was warm enough. Tomorrow's going to be even warmer. But here comes the cold front. We we're telling you about this just a few minutes ago. That front is now cutting through the southeastern U.S., Charlotte, Atlanta, all the way down to New Orleans. 
Uh, seeing a cooler air mass moving in. That front is on the way, but it's not a real strong front. If anything, it'll be more windy than cold behind the front. So the wind after tomorrow's nice day will start building it again with uh, some very windy conditions Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. While we await the arrival of that weak front, skies are generally clear to partly cloudy across the state and it's warm everywhere. I mean, even in uh, Pensacola, 74, Jacksonville, 79, Orlando, 81 right now. It's 80 degrees in Fort Myers. High was 83 there uh, today on the West Coast. For tonight, partly cloudy skies abounding across the entire south end of the state. Overnight lows go from 75 down to about 71. For the boaters tomorrow, one good boating day the entire week. Tomorrow is it. Southeast at 5 to 10, 1 to 2 foot seas. Here's my six-day forecast. Check it out. A nice day tomorrow, 83. Then windy and cooler. Not colder, but cooler Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Coming into the NBC6 newsroom, you are looking live from Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. You can see uh, BSO crews on the scene and also uh, medics. What we have, we're being told, is that there is a man lying on the tarmac. Now, at this point, there is no information as to who that man is, how he got there on the tarmac, or what his condition is. But again, medics have been called to tend to this man. And at this hour, due to all of this activity, still no word if any air traffic is being delayed or diverted due to this. But again, we will continue to follow it and try to get more information but a man lying on the tarmac at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. We, of course, will keep you posted. AARP says the vast majority of Florida's senior citizens want to choose their own long-term care options, not to be forced into a state-run HMO. The senior advocacy group released a poll today bashing the state's plan to enroll thousands of seniors in a mandatory managed care program. These are the results of a, of a survey they took about Medicaid. 77-year-old Earl Daubert doesn't want to have his long-term care decisions made by some bureaucrat with the state. I've seen the government try to manage affairs for people, and they seem to have a long history of failure doing that. I would prefer not to be a member of that clan. Daubert and volunteers with AARP went door-to-door -door in the Capitol, leaving copies of AARP's latest survey for lawmakers. The survey found three out of four Floridians think seniors on Medicaid should choose their own long-term care services. Only 14 percent like the state's plan to require seniors to use a managed care program like an HMO. We don't oppose managed care. What we oppose is forcing older people who do not wish to go into managed care to take managed care or receive no services whatsoever. Jonathan Burns with the Agency for Healthcare Administration says the managed care plan will offer in-home services that Medicaid doesn't even cover now. While the enrollment in this program is mandatory, uh, it's going to give participants more choice. But the reform plan still needs state lawmakers to sign off. And seniors who aren't thrilled with it say they'll push hard this spring to make sure their voices are heard. Now, the mandatory managed care program for seniors on Medicaid is slated to start as a pilot program this fall in several Panhandle counties. State lawmakers would have to agree before the program could be taken statewide. I'm here at our assignment desk where we're gathering new information on some of the stories we're following for you this afternoon. Coming up all new at 6, a new push for your privacy will reveal how local and state officials are trying to stop the sale of your cell phone records. And ahead in this hour, the hottest new show on NBC6. We're giving you an all new access to the Miami Heat. Plus, a prescription diet pill that some say blocks fat could soon be available over the counter. And has the joy gone from soy? Next, why some researchers are now unsweetened about its benefits. We'll be back. NBC6 Weather Plus Doppler Radar is brought to you by the Miccosukee Tribe of Indians of Florida. NBC Tonight, the one night where anything can happen, and it usually does. Starting with the hottest destination, an all-new Las Vegas, <laughs> where you can do anything, but they'll be watching. This one again. <laughs> then, it's the show critics call insanely good. He's trying to tell me something. And the award winner, Patricia Arquette, in an all-new medium. <laughs> it's all new tonight on NBC. This is the inside of NBC6 News. Hello, I'm Michael Williams. This is the most technically advanced newsroom in South Florida. When news breaks, this place comes alive to bring you the facts. Get ready for this. However, we won't be first at the risk of not getting it right. We are committed to only going on the air after we have confirmed our information with at least two reliable sources. True News leadership comes from getting it right. 
NBC6, South Florida's news leader. An update now on that breaking news we're following out of Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. A live look now where the scene is this. We're being told that a man aboard a Continental commuter plane for some reason busted out a window on board the plane and jumped out, landing on the tarmac. So that man had been found lying on the tarmac. Uh, BSO called to the scene. Medics also on the scene were being told that that man has been sedated. But at this point, no word as to why he busted out the window and jumped out or how he was actually able to do that. But again, that man found lying on the tarmac at Hollywood International, uh, Air, Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. And again, no word at this point if any flights are being delayed because of this. When we get more information, we'll bring it to you. Every day, we report on the latest health studies, which often contradict earlier research. That can make it confusing, even maddening for consumers. Tonight, the latest controversy is over soy and cholesterol. Health Connection reporter Diana Gonzalez brings us the new developments. Soy protein can be consumed in a variety of forms. In 1999, the FDA approved labeling foods that contain soy as protective against heart disease. Some research had shown soy could help lower cholesterol. But now, after reviewing 22 randomized trials, uh, trials that compared patients that were given soy protein versus other forms of protein, uh, we realized that the, that the soy itself doesn't lower the cholesterol. That's the latest from the American Heart Association, which has now concluded soy has little or no effect on cholesterol, triglycerides, or blood pressure. Now, the public is going to be confused in the presence of this. And uh, I'm not telling you to throw away your soy products and so forth. And it, it, it doesn't elevate cholesterol at all. University of Miami cardiologist Eduardo de Marchena says soy remains an excellent source of protein, a healthy substitute for meat, whole milk, and cheeses that contain saturated fats. And it's full of vitamins, it's full of fiber, it has other nutritional aspects that are good. It just won't lower your cholesterol outside of the fact that you're not eating other cholesterol-rich foods. The American Heart Association says taking soy supplements is not recommended, not even for menopausal symptoms. Heart experts say statin drugs remain the most effective way to lower bad cholesterol. Now that there is serious doubt about the heart health benefits of soy, it's likely the FDA will reevaluate companies being able to make those claims on food labels. The AHA review also found that soy does not prevent or treat uh, breast, prostate, and uterine cancer. And tonight, the National Prostate Cancer Coalition is refuting that finding. So a lot of controversy about this new study tonight. Live outside our Miami studios, Diana Gonzalez, NBC6. A prescription diet drug could soon be available over the counter. The Food and Drug Administration is considering whether to approve GlaxoSmithKline's request to sell an over-the-counter version of Xenical. Xenical blocks the absorption of fat and helps to control calorie intake. The over-the-counter version would be called Ally and would contain half the dose of the prescription version. Three months after Hurricane Wilma, many residents here in South Florida still have a blue roof over their head. Coming up all new at 6 o'clock, we'll update the way to replace the tiles along with a lack of manpower. Find out what, if anything, you can do to speed up your repairs. Plus, they are the Davids among the Goliaths, little mom and pop hotels along our beaches. Ahead here at 5, the tactics they are taking to stay in business. And President Bartlett gets his wings clipped coming up the downfall of a drama. Plus, they got in, they got out. Up next, the one thing they didn't get when the NBC6 News at 5 continues. You're watching NBC6 News with Jackie Nespro and Julia Yarbo. NBC6, South Florida's news leader. I'm Brian Williams. We'll be live from New Orleans along with Harry Connick Jr. and Branford Marsalis with an exclusive look at a community for jazz musicians who were made homeless by Katrina. Join us for NBC Nightly News. Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Palmetto Ford. Great prices, great people, great service for over 40 years. Give us a try before you buy. 305-592-FORD. A convenience store surveillance tape caught this robbery attempt as two men smash a truck into a Fort Worth, Texas store. The pair allegedly attempted a smash and grab robbery, but police say they got away before stealing the ATM machine. Later, the two led police on a chase, but escaped capture when they abandoned their vehicle.
I don't know about you, but I finally had to break down and turn on the AC. It's that you time did? of year. <laughs> it's gotten warm again, but John Gerard says it's going to get cool for a couple of days again. That's right, exactly. Now, on a scale of one to ten, be honest now, what do you think today was? I mean, ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exaggeration, I think, but I give it about a, a nine. Yes. The Canadian judge, eight point five. The <laughs> Japanese judge, seven point. You know, there's always favoritism, but anyway, we do ourselves a, a nice forecast. I'd give it about a nine or so, and tomorrow is going to be about a nine point five. Uh, tonight, though, during the evening hours, seventy five, partly cloudy skies, seventy three. See, I was talking about. You know, a scale of 1 to 10 because we're gearing up for the Olympics pretty soon here on NBC. Can't wait for that. 73 at midnight, mild and partly cloudy overnight. 71 for a low temperature. Did you peak? Did you get a chance to see that six-day forecast? You're not supposed to see that yet. Okay, I'll show you that in just a minute, though. Time lapse showing that from our eastern financial sky cam. Clouds coming in from southeast to northwest across the area today. Uh, so a mix of clouds and sunshine, but no rain anywhere. The uh, atmosphere is really dried out. But there is a front that will bring about a change in our weather in the next 36 hours, the front really uh, a more important weather system up north than it is here. Maine getting hit with snow. Connecticut, the uh, New England states getting hit with snow and ice today. Showers across the Carolinas all the way down to South Georgia, North Florida right now. But down here in South Florida, we have uh, dry conditions. It's likely to stay that way. The uh, front is still several hundred miles away and doesn't really appear to be a real strong front, not like the ones we've seen over the past two or three weeks. Now, I don't expect much of any rain with the front either, maybe a sprinkle, but notice this little slug of moisture over the Caribbean sliding off to the west with the front well to the north. The two really not connecting, so not a real moisture-laden front, not a real soaker. Again, just a shower maybe tomorrow night, but the, the biggest impact will be a bit of a cool down, but windy weather building in behind the front for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 76 in Hollywood right now, 75 out around the Miccosukee. Lauderdale Lakes at 76. To the north we go, Orlando 81, 75 at Tampa, 79 Jacksonville, 71 currently in Tallahassee. We at 80 for a high today, 73 for a low. These are more like late spring temperatures. Seas to more one to two feet for the boaters. A good boating day, but enjoy it quick because it will get windy and cooler after a warm day tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Not cold, but definitely you'll notice the change. Back to you, Julia. Fictional President Jed Bartlett will be leaving office this year, but he'll not be replaced. NBC's political drama The West Wing will not be returning next season. The West Wing has been slipping in the ratings since its move to Sunday nights, despite the current presidential campaign storyline. The Emmy Award-winning show will sign off May 14th after seven seasons. Jason Lee, better known as Earl, has an excuse for missing work better suited for a fifth grader. He has the chicken box. Production on the NBC show My Name is Earl is being shut down for a couple of weeks while Lee recovers. The network announced Sunday it is renewing My Name is Earl for a second season. Okay, Heat fans, listen up because NBC6 is debuting a show tonight that's going to get you all fired up for the long stretch of the Heat season. Jackie, calm down for just a second. <laughs> it is going to be a lot of fun. By the way, how's everybody like Jackie on this tall box? Did you have to tell them? You're like a six-foot guard for the Heat <laughs> right <tall>. now. <laughs> hey, the show is called Access Heat. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to take fans places they have never been before. Let's take a sneak peek at what you can expect tonight at 7 o'clock. If you weren't doing this, what do you think you'd be doing? <laughs> Coach Haskins is starting five black players. Look out for love. I've seen Coach Riley get dunked on the first day of the game, just added a little butter to the popcorn. Hi, Heat fans. I'm Karelic. Everybody wants a job, you know. DJ Irie, Access Heat, Hot Tracks. On the court and off access heat with Joe Rose and myself is your all access pass that will take you behind the scenes with your favorite NBA team. Of course, the Miami Heat tip off is at seven o'clock tonight. Don't miss it. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, four protesters briefly grabbed the Olympic torch from the hands of an Italian track star today. Now, this is video of the torch run shortly before the incident happened. The protesters known as the disobedient ones are associated with the anti-globalization movement Relay escorts managed to grab the torch back. More than 30 protests have marked the torch relay since it left Rome December 8th. And there are just 18 days to go. Until the Olympics kick off, I'll be traveling to Torino, Italy for the Games, bringing you live reports on your favorite sports. And you can also read my blog or web diary on NBC6.net. NBC6 is your Olympic station.
She's going to be coming back speaking Italian and eating a lot of pasta. <laughs> coming up all new on the NBC6 News at 6, a world-renowned forensic expert joins the investigation into the disappearance of the missing groom from a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. We are live with this story. Plus, a man and woman accused of robbing and killing an 80-year-old widow learn their fate. And it's an extension of identity theft, pirating your cell phone. Coming up, local lawmakers unveiling a bill that can protect your privacy and your good name. We'll have that, plus your latest Weather Plus forecast and all the breaking news coming your way next at 6. So please stay with us. We are coming right back. Dateline NBC. Real life murder mysteries. Cool TV exclusives. Hidden camera investigations. Now this is reality TV. Stone Phillips and Curry. Dateline NBC. The mom-and-pop hotels that once dotted much of the South Florida coastline are now at a crossroads. Soaring land values spell soaring property taxes, while developers offer big money to sell out. So will these hotels be around to greet vacationers in the future? That's the question. Sun Sentinel reporter Raylan Story has more on the fight they now face. This is an, an area where they can grill. And right by the sea has been a Delray Beach institution for more than 50 years. The Oceanfront Hotel is a top pick on TripAdvisor, yeah, and its 28 yeah. rooms are booked from Thanksgiving until spring. This is one of our luxury ocean fronts. And it's Still, manager Tommy Jack Bahama Anastas before. says it's tough to keep up with unit. escalating taxes. If the taxes keep going up, I don't think we could raise our rates, you know, to keep up with uh, what the taxes are doing. The resort stays afloat because it's wholly owned by the Wright family. They continue to upgrade the rooms and amenities, but Anastas has watched other small hotels fall victim to rising taxes and insurance costs. They just found the easy way out of uh, taking the offer from the developers. In Palm Beach County, only a dozen small hotels and eight bed and breakfasts remain out of about 200 properties. In Broward County, small hotels make up just over a third of the more than 600 lodgings countywide. Depending on the weather outside, we also serve dinner here. One so solution like may be options. to go upscale. The completely renovated the pillars at New River Sound opened five years ago. It became one of the first boutique inns on Fort Lauderdale Beach. If you don't have something special to offer to your guests, you'll probably go down. Visitors are treated to luxury linens, gorgeous views, and meals prepared by a French chef. Manager Carolyn Bennell says the high-end prices offset expenses. And that's how we survive, because people are ready to pay the price to get the service we offer and the location we have. Still other owners worry the days of small independent hotels are numbered, a piece of the past many guests don't want to see check out. They say, please be here next year. To find out more about the economics of small hotels, you can check out the Your Business section in today's edition of The Sun Sentinel. From The Sun Sentinel, Raylan Story, NBC6. From South Florida's news leader, this is NBC6 News.